Time for us to get started. Let's open with a word of prayer real quick. Father, I thank you for this morning. God, what a beautiful day to come and worship you, Father. God, I just pray that you'll prepare us for what you have this morning, Lord. God, that each one of us can leave here saying, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Father, I just thank you for this time. I just pray that everything we do bring glory and honor to you. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just a couple of announcements real quick. Uh, it's time for shoe boxes. Work on our shoe boxes. We hadn't got very many yet. Miss Jan's getting nervous. Bring her some money. She'll go shopping, whatever. Just we need some shoe boxes. So uh, don't forget, to, sir. Deadline next Sunday. Deadline next Sunday? Ooh, we got a lot of work to do in a week, don't we? All right. Moving on. This afternoon is our Thanksgiving banquet here at the church. It starts at 5.30. It starts in here. We'll have a, a short, short <laughs> devotion. So, but you know how Hugh is. You get him turned loose. But you know our pastor said, if you're not in here, you don't get to eat. <laughs> yeah. Boy, did I smooth that over on him. <laughs> hey, I'm used to it. Oh. Then Saturday week is the Senior Saints Sunday School Party. So don't forget that. And then the youth Christmas party is uh, December the 7th. We'll have no services Wednesday night. We'll not do anything tomorrow night. We're not having our prayer group. Family week, you know, everybody's traveling. So many people's in, families in town. Spend time with your family. So we're not doing anything tomorrow night. Brother Wade. All right, let's stand together. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Sing it again. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's 
because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks to God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God be the glory for the things he has saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did 
loved and grace appear the hour I first believe y'all stand with us my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns an ending love amazing grace the Lord has promised good to me his word my home secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains are gone I've been set free my God my has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns an ending love amazing grace my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns an ending love amazing grace the earth shall soon dissolve the sun forbear to shine but God who called me here below will be forever mine will be forever again grace grace God's grace grace that will pardon and cleanse within grace grace God sin grace that is greater than all our sin ushers y'all make your way down Let us pray. 
Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, it's so great to be in your house this morning. Father, we can feel the love. We can feel the grace. Father, we just want to give you all honor and praise that goes on at our church. Father, sometimes we just take for granted that everything that this church was free. But, Father, as we've seen in the video, freedom was a hard price. Many give lives, give the soul. And, Father God, we want to remember them. Father, we ask you now to just bless this tithe and offering for better use in your kingdom. And, Father, we just need you so much. It's a world in so much turmoil. But, Father, we know when we reach up that you'll put us up and be with you. For all these things, we ask in your precious holy name. Amen.
Well, amen. Thank you, Brother Link. Thank you for singing for us this morning, and uh, thanks for all the folks who've gone before us, who've made it possible for this church to be here. And uh, uh, so good to see all of you this morning on this Thanksgiving holiday. I know we've got a lot of folks gone today. I think we've got about as many gone as we got here this morning, but uh, it's good that we can can travel and see family and go through so many things. We're so glad to have y'all here this morning. Uh, my friend Screech out here came through uh, a few weeks back. Martin, I think, is his first name, he said. Marvin, Marvin. Uh, he came, he and his wife came through here when we had our work day up here, and uh, they came by. They were moving to the area looking for a church, and they've come back this morning, settled around Calhoun, but he's come back this morning. Glad to have him here. And Miss Jenny, Where'd Miss Jeannie go? She was sitting right there. Miss Jeannie Evans, y'all know her. And uh, we sure glad to see her this morning. Mama, I got this. I got this. I got this. I'm used to doing this as a solo act. You see, I used to say, I should have known better. Amen. No, Leslie and Doug Ingram, sure glad to have them here again today. Anybody else, Mama? Anybody else before I go on? <laughs> All right. <laughs> you can tell she's feeling better. I can get her to laugh anyway. But uh, listen, I'm thankful for lots of things. I'm thankful for you folks this morning. And uh, I'm thankful. Miss Penny, put that picture up there. I'm thankful I don't need a little pole to catch a fish. You know, this morning, I want y'all to see how a real fisherman fishes right there. I just jump in the water and catch them by hand. I caught that fish five years ago, 39-pound catfish. I just put that up there for Eddie and Russell this morning <laughs> to see that I don't need no sissy little pole and hook to catch no fish. But, uh, no, they, and then, you know what, I got run down, now they, people say, I thought you was smart. Stump, jumping in the water, sticking your hand up in a hole ain't real smart, preacher. And so I got a lot of negative comments from that. It don't matter what I do, they're just going to give me a hard time. But as I, Eddie catches them little old bitty things. My fish, my fish eats Eddie's fish. So I just want y'all to know that, just for snacks, just for snacks. Huh? Yeah, I know, but it, anyway, it's pretty, it's pretty. I just want, I just, they've been giving me such a hard time, I decided I'd had enough. And when I had enough, I had enough. I just got serious with them. No, moving right along, uh, we're going to let children go out for children's church right now. If they want to go. They can stay in here if they want to. They're going. A lot of our children are gone this morning. I think Matt said they were, but just a handful over there today. They were several of the young families out of town. For a holiday, take care of it over there, all right? Luke chapter 17 is where we're at this morning about why be thankful. Do you consider yourself a thankful person today? Can I ask you that as we move on to Thanksgiving? Do you consider yourself a thankful person? Thankful for several things. I, uh, the history of Thanksgiving goes back to 1621, uh, Y'all may remember Brother Ray Mears that was here. Well, about three years ago, Brother Ray and I left right after I'd left my previous church and had a little time off, and, and we traveled up the, the eastern coast, and one of the places we went to was Plymouth Rock, Plymouth where the pilgrims all landed. And uh, in fact, they've got a replica of the Mayflower there. It's a neat little place to go uh, if you want to go through there sometimes. But I, I just love studying history, but it was 1621, they had... They had left Plymouth, England, actually, coming to America in 1620, traveled for a little over two months, and uh, when they arrived they, there in Massachusetts Bay uh, in, in 1620, they, they, many of them stayed on the ship. The first year, over half of the group died, or about half of the group of 100, a little over 100 died, uh, about half of them, there was only 50-something left, and they went through that first summer. Uh, some of the Indians had come and taught them how to plant corn, and they had harvested their corn. And after they harvested their corn, for three days they paused and gave thanks to God for helping them make it that far. Now, you know, we could have been bitter. We'd lost half of our family and friends and people that had traveled with us. We could have been frustrated, angry with God, but instead they gave thanks. In fact, if you go into the rotunda 
of, ca of the Capitol. I've been there, been through there a couple times, and the Spiritual Heritage Tour. If you ever get a chance to go through there, the Spiritual Heritage Tour is an awesome experience. They'll take you all through the Capitol. You'll see all the spiritual history of our nation. There are six giant pictures, six or eight giant pictures in the rotunda, but of those six pictures, you may not believe this, they talk about us having a secular heritage. Most of them deal with faith. One of them is a picture of the pilgrims landing there in Plymouth and gathering for a prayer meeting and Bible study around, had a big Geneva Bible, and they gathered there and they prayed as they came on shore there in the Plymouth area. What an exciting, uh, what, a, what a thought that is, an excitement about our history but again, my point being, they thanked God because, for the simple thing that they had made it through their first year. We need to learn to give God thanks for things. We don't do that several times. Why, why do we not give more thanks, do you believe? Anybody have an idea why we're maybe not thankful sometimes? We have too much, maybe? Huh? Spoiled, Okay. I think Eddie mentioned it in his prayer a while ago. We take God for granted. We take the things that we have, just like fresh air to breathe and uh, usually good water to drink. And uh, depends on what part of the area you're in and uh, whether the filters are working well. But uh, what, what else? Uh, we have a lot to be thankful for, Wayne. We don't think about it. We don't stop and think about it often, do we? We just assume electricity is going to be there until we turn the switch on and it's not there. We do. We really do. We just assume. We get so comfortable. And I think of those early pilgrims, pioneers, and others who you worked all day today to make sure you had something to eat. And you focused that day on just making sure there was something simple to eat. And, you know, we, we have gotten very comfortable. And it's the danger, and it, we see it in the Bible through and through, don't we? When we... When we get so comfortable with God and we just accept things and we quit speaking to God, thanking God, loving God, and all of a sudden something bad happens because we've just stopped relying on the Lord and thanking God for what we have. The story today in Luke chapter 17 is about the, the uh, men that were healed from their leprosy, their sickness, and, uh, and uh, some were thankful and some were not. Let's talk about that for a little while this morning as we prepare for a week that we're just reminded to stop and be thankful to God. And it's not always thankful because everything's perfect in your life. But we have so much to be thankful for, whether everything goes perfect. And it doesn't go perfect for anybody. I don't care if you've got a lot of money, little money. It doesn't go perfect in your life. And uh, you can be the richest person around and still be the sickest person around. Or you can be the poorest person around and have the greatest joy in your life. We choose to be thankful we choose to be joyful because of what God has promised us and so let's look at this today in Luke 17 beginning in verse 11 stand with me quickly if you would if you can and we just honor the inerrant infallible word of God now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee and then he entered a certain village there and they met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off that was custom. They couldn't come close. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? And were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Fathers, we read this today. We are reminded, Lord, that uh, we've also experienced some touches of God, some healing of God, some cleansing of God, and that we also have a lot to be thankful for. Remind us to be a thankful people. For thankfulness, we know, Lord, is contagious. And it is a blessing to those who are around us. So God, help each of us today to be a thankful people. Thankful to you, O oh Lord, for all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right. As we look at this today, there are five reasons that I pointed out why I thought about uh, the reasons that we ought to be thankful today. 
And in some of these, you ever wonder about when he said to this one, your faith has made you whole, and when he talked about these others who, who went away and uh, there were no others that found to give glory to God, do you ever wonder if maybe their leprosy came back, <laughs> you know, because they didn't give thanks to God? I don't know, the scripture doesn't tell us that. But he said of him, his faith was what had made him whole. Why did they show faith? Well, they showed faith because when he said, go show yourself to the priest, now that was the custom. If you had leprosy, and the only way you could be declared clean, the priest had to declare you clean. But just because, you see, when you had leprosy, which was equal, by the way, uh, kind of a, a symbol, if you will, of sin, not saying that every person who got leprosy was a big sinner, I'm not saying that, but it's used in the Bible as kind of a symbol for for, for sin, how that we are, we are uh, you know, we're not righteous, we're dirty, our, our righteousness is as filthy rags, and that's a kind of a, even a reference to, to some of the rags that were used and to, to, wipe up, to, to wrap up the, the uh, leprosy, leper sores and things like that. And so it's just a, kind of a symbol of that. But if you were going, you couldn't go and participate in worship. Like, if you had leprosy, you couldn't be in here this morning. I, I'm just using it in a church term. Uh, and because it was so highly contagious. And if somebody passed by, they had to stand back and they had to declare, I'm a leper, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. And so, that, and you know, I, I thought about that today in our, in our day and time. That, that to go and show it to the priest was their way that gave them permission to come back into the crowd, to come back to church, if you will, and to get back into worship with God. Because, listen, folks, sin is what keeps us unclean and separated from God. When sin is in our life, unconfessed, unhealed, unrepented of sin in our lives, we are in, in need of a cleansing. And I'm here to tell you that nothing will separate you from the love of God, but it will separate you from the fellowship with God. Just like if you're not saved, if you're still living in your sin, doing things your own way, you are separated from God, at least in a spiritual sense of where you can have oneness and fellowship with God because God does not have that right fellowship with sin. You have to understand God dwells in a place of perfection. Heaven is a place of perfection. No sin can be there. No sin can go there. And God wouldn't be clean himself if he fellowshiped with sin. And therefore, that's why our sin must be dealt with. But even as a believer, if you backslide on God, and if you begin to sin and not confess that sin and repent of that sin, it won't cause you to lose your salvation. It won't cause you to lose the love of God. But it will affect your relationship with God. It'll separate you from God. In fact, the Bible says in 1 Peter 3, if you're not right with your spouse, your prayers will be hindered. Did you know that? I mean, so if you're not, if you're not forgiving one another and loving each other, if you're not right with your spouse, it'll affect you spiritually. And that's just one picture of that. But when you are not right with God, or you are not right with your fellow man, you uh, hinder that oneness, that closeness, that fellowship with Almighty God. And so one of, that's why it is so important, the Bible says, to confess your sins. And then the Bible says, and, and the confess means to agree with God about your sin. And then it says, He is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That means when you sin, you need to judge your sin. You need to look at your sin and you need to say, God, I did it and it was wrong. Oh, God. And I don't think it's wrong to say, God, please forgive that. Put that under the blood and let me move on. Now, someone I've heard said before, preachers say, well, you don't have to ask for forgiveness anymore. The forgiveness is already provided. It's already there. You just have to confess it and agree with God about it. And then God automatically forgives that. But however you say it, it doesn't matter. The point is, you and I have to look at our sin the way God looks at our sin. I'm here to tell you today, we, we, I, I saw an article on uh, television this morning about how few young couples are getting married today. They just decide early on just to live together outside the bonds of matrimony. And it's amazing today, many people don't even think that is a sin. But I want you to know, God says it's a sin. God says it's a sin, my friends. And I believe that we're wrong in the church 
If we stop, does that mean that we condemn someone? No. But we do need to know that if we're, if we're living apart uh, from the will of God, that that's what's called sin. Sin is when God has a perfection and we decide to go beyond that. We decide to say, God, I don't care what your goal is, what your model is. And that's what's called missing the mark. It's like shooting at a target with a bow and you miss the mark. Well, God says when we miss God's mark of holiness and purity, then that is sin. And so there's a lot of things that sin. I'm just using that as one example this morning. But God says that we need to deal with our sin. And that sin then becomes something that will hinder our relationship with God if not dealt with. Look at some things this morning, and I say all that to say that one of the things that we ought to be thankful for is the fact that God loves us enough to even love us through our sin and to forgive our sins and to make us right with Him. But we don't need to let that stay there. We need to be right with God. And so that means we evaluate, we judge our life. The three, five things this morning. First reason we ought to be thankful is because of our condition. Because of the condition that we were in as believers, uh, as, as the lost before we became believers. When we think about it, friends, when we think about it, we are really... Uh, we're really not able to take care of ourselves. I look at that, what it says here uh, down in verse 22 of this chapter. It says, uh, then he said to his disciples, the days will come when, when you will desire to see. One of those days, son of man, you will not see him. Do you know that uh, we think about that in, in our lives, that, that the, without Christ, we're, we're in a pretty bad shape, aren't we? These guys should have been thankful because of the condition that they were in. They needed a healing. You know what? Without Christ, when, when we're not saved, we are in the condition that separates us from God. And we need healing. I'm here to tell you, when the Bible says, and by the way, Isaiah 53, when it says, all oh, we have sinned and gone our own way and turned, everyone, and, and turned our own way, and, 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 uh, and it talks there about the Messiah. It's, it's an Old Testament passage about the Messiah. But it says, it says in that text, and by his stripes we are healed. Now, the charismatic groups take that and say, you're automatically healed. You just got to claim it. You just got to name it and claim it. God wants everybody well. And that verse right there says, you're already healed. You just got to have faith. That's not at all what that verse is about. That verse is about your sin problem that it said right there. That verse is about you being sin sick. And that verse is about the blood of Jesus healing you from that sin problem in your life. And it's saying there that the stripes that Jesus took on the cross, it may not heal, it's not meant necessarily to heal you physically, even though we know God does that sometimes, but it is definitely meant to heal you spiritually. And that's what that verse is talking about. It's talking about the healing to our spiritual sickness that Jesus provided. And so we think about that today. We think about our need, our condition. You know, I think one of the greatest probably examples for us, is the fact that the Bible refers to us as sheep. It says we're sheep. Now, I think about a sheep, you, you know, that is probably the most, the most undefended animal in the world. About the only defense it has is its wool. If it's got a good thick wool on it, it's hard for another animal, a wolf or something, to take it because of that. But yet, the head and other places, uh, it is just a defenseless animal. In fact, it could not function without a shepherd it really couldn't function in the wild without a shepherd it needs to be defended i think about that crook on the end of that shepherd's staff to pull them back from the out of a thicket or away from the edge and i i think about how jesus was the great shepherd and how he came he left the flock of 99 just to go find one because he knew that a, a sheep can get lost a sheep can't find his way back to the group he knew that, that he had to go get sheep, you know, and that's a message for us about soul winning. We need to go get the sheep, those who God's intended to be sheep. We need to get them and draw them back to the family of God. And, but a sheep is so defenseless. He is so incapable of taking care of himself. Sometimes sounds like us, doesn't it? At least when we're thinking spiritually. When we're talking about against the devil who has come to steal, kill, and destroy we don't have any power against the devil if we're not saved. Did you know that? Are you with me this morning? Hello? We don't have the ability...
to defeat the enemy within ourselves. Your personality's not going to do it. Your money's not going to do it. Your, your good looks isn't going to do it. All those things is not going to get you beyond the enemy. I'm going to tell you, if he can, he'll bring you down. We need God's help to deal with the enemy. And so our condition is that we are just victims in a spiritual world. I know we're strong and we think we can make it and we can do everything. But without Christ, you and I are a target. You and I have no ability to deal with eternity. We have no ability to deal with spiritual things. And so that was the condition of these men. They were, they were sick. They could do nothing to, to fix their leprosy. There was no cure for it in their day. I mean, leprosy had no cure. They had leper colonies where you were sent to spend the rest of your life, and you sat there while parts of your body fell off. And you rotted right there. Your body basically rotted. You could do nothing. There was no medical treatment. Only God could make a difference. Now, friends, I want you to know before you got saved, that's exactly who you and I were. We could do nothing to have a hope for eternity. And we ought to be thankful because we now serve a God who's given us hope. We now serve a God. And we ought to thank God every day that we have a future. We ought to thank God every day that we've been forgiven. We ought to thank God every day for Jesus. So I'm telling you, folks, He's given us a reason to live. Why do you get up and go to work every day? Why do you, why do you survive? What makes life worth living? I'm here to tell you, without Christ, we're really nothing but a machine. You know, we're just, all we do, we get up and we go to work to make money so we can make bills, so we can pay the bills, and so we can survive one more day. And what are we surviving for? So I can make more money, so I can make more bills, so I can survive another day, so I can make more money, so I can make more bills. And along the way, maybe a little fun stuff, but, but life really has no purpose. It has no good end. In fact, I say to people all the time that, that without Christ, you better enjoy this life because it's as good as it's going to get. It gets worse after this life. That's pretty sad news right there, isn't it? Leave, leave church today and go tell all your friends, Pastor sure had some sad news today. I'm not saved, but the pastor said, if I'm not saved, it's as good as it's going to get. And that's real discouraging today. <laughs> that's just more reason to get saved. Amen? Because when you're saved, this is as bad as it's going to get. It's just going to get better and better and better. So the condition we look at here is you ought to be thankful because of the condition these guys were in. And we're in the same condition. And we ought to be thankful also, number two, because God hears our cries. Aren't you glad we have a God that's involved in our life? I'm talking about a God. Most of the religions believe God's way out there, too busy for them. Some believe God goes on vacation, takes other trips, has other ideas, doesn't really care what's going on about them. But I want you to know today that God is a God who knows so much about you. I love how the Bible says that God knows every need you have before you ask. Did you know that? You don't inform God of what your needs are. God knows what you really need. And you know it's a good thing that God knows my needs because sometimes my needs, my idea of my needs and God's idea of my needs might be different. <laughs> Hello? As your needs and God, has your definition, if you made a list of needs and God made a list of your needs, they might not be the same. Amen? God, I need a new fishing boat. God said, no, you don't. Jump in there and put a glove on catch that thing by hand. Amen, Russell? Well, I'm saying, I'm just saying. No, I, I'm serious. We, we sometimes, we think we need this and we need this now. And God says, no, you don't need that because if you get that, you know, you'll go crazy. You know, <clears throat> I can't trust you with that. And so for various reasons, there's some things God gives us and some things he doesn't. But it's just unique that God knows even the details of every count. He knows every hair on our head. You know, this verse talks about crying out to God. And when I think about the hairs on my head, I cry a little bit. <laughs> brother Chuck, don't start nothing, Brother Chuck, over there. Don't start nothing, you old silver fox. But, uh, but you know, you know man got, man's 112 and got more hair than I got. That just ain't right. But if my hair grows better than my ears, I bet, than it grows in your ears. <laughs> we just have to test that out one day. We'll have to test that out. But you see, God is attentive to our cries. God is attentive to our cries. He, he, he knows everything about us. Second Chronicles 16, 9 says this about God, that His eyes run to and fro throughout the earth. 
you know, and, and he, he talks about how he, sh- he wants to show himself strong on behalf of those who love him. Aren't you glad that you've got a God that he's watching over you and he cares about what's happening in your life? Well, why doesn't he stop some of this stuff if God's looking at my life? Why doesn't God stop it? I would be more thankful if God would stop it all. Well, God will one day. But that's called what? That's called heaven. And this is not heaven. You're not living in heaven. Please remember that. I'm going to keep saying that until you know the answer every time. I want you to remember, because I get so tired of people saying, well, if God, if God was real, why does he let so much bad stuff happen? I always tell them all the time, well, he will stop all the bad stuff one day, but that's heaven. This ain't it. We live in a sin-cursed world. The God of this world is the little G God. The devil is the majority. Follow him in this world. So don't blame God for everything bad that happens. Yeah, he could stop it, but he's not yet. Because God's going to let you have a choice about obedience. He's going to let you have a choice about following him. So, so God hears our cries, though. He's attentive to what goes on. I, I think about the children of Israel down captive in Egypt. And, and when, when God sent Moses in there, he said, God has heard your cries. Did God not know they were in captivity all those years, 400 years? Did God not know? No, he knew, didn't he, Brother Chuck? He knew they were there. He had seen their cries. Why were they there? They themselves had done some disobedience themselves, hadn't they? And God was letting them deal with some hard times in their life because of their disobedience and the times that they had forgotten God. Psalm 139 says, no matter where you go, whether you go to, whether you kind of, uh, it says, even if I make my bed in Sheol, God is there. And I get up early in the morning. Whatever I do, God is there. You're not ever going to escape him. All those things that you're doing that maybe your wife doesn't know about or your husband doesn't know about or your children don't know about or your mom and dad don't know about. Please know this. God knows. God knows. God knows what's going on in your life. And you need to make it, you need to be honest with God. Listen, listen, if you came to me this week, I've had young people, I've had older folks come to me and, you know, they've just drifted away from God, bad things happening in their life. And, and they say, this is what I've done. This is kind of the mistakes I've made. What do I need to do? I said, first thing you need to do is make it right with God. Above everything else, you need to make it right with God. I had a young lady come to me one time out of wedlock, had, had become pregnant and, and uh, just crying and so broken about it. And, and I said, I want you to know something. I, and I'll stand up here and I'll preach that we need, to, we need to practice morality and we need to be married before we get into having children. And, and there may be someone here who's, who's gone through that. That's okay. I want to say to you, I want to say to you today, though, I may preach against that. I may preach what the Word of God says. But if somebody comes to me and that's happened in their their life, I'm going to look at them and I'm going to say, you know what? I preach on don't spill the milk, don't spill the milk, don't spill the milk. But once you spill the milk, ain't nothing to do but put my arms around you and love on you. And give you some grace and say, let's put it all back together now. God will take that brokenness and He'll help us put the pieces back together. God doesn't take us when we're down and kick us and say, I don't want you here. In fact, God tells us, he says, just come on and let's get it all right. God wants you to get it right. He doesn't want you to, he doesn't want you to stay away or he doesn't want you to think he doesn't love you anymore. He wants you to make it right. And so that's, what these, that's why we ought to be thankful because we have a God that hears our cries and a God who always gives us, uh, I used to say he's a God of second chances, but Brother Chuck, he's the God of 220 second chances, amen? He's a God of chance after chance when God says, repent, come home, be right. Number three, we ought to be thankful because God's filled with compassion. God is such a compassionate God. And it really ties into this hearing our cries because God's moved by our brokenness. God is moved by our cries. Oh, friends, when we cry, I believe God cries. And I'm putting that in my terms. I know there's no tears in heaven, but I'm just saying I think it makes God sad when he sees his children sad. If your children are hurting, you're hurting for them. Unless you're the one just spank them and hurt them. And then maybe you're not, but you ought to be. <laughs> no, I, I tell you, I used to whip my kids and say, this is going to hurt me worse than it's going to hurt you. No, I didn't say that because my daddy said it and I didn't believe it then. No, don't tell me it's going to hurt me worse than it's going to hurt you. I'm, Cause I'm fixing to hurt you. In Mark chapter five and verse nineteen, you remember that de- demonic guy living in the cemetery, and 
And after Jesus had healed him and set him free from the demons, and Jesus told him, he said, he said, now go home and tell people about my compassion. You know, Jesus could have looked at him like we look sometimes at people of the world and say, oh, we don't want you here. We don't think God got a plan for you. But I'm here to tell you the worst person you know God can save. The worst person you know God can save. God is an awesome God. He's full of compassion. You remember when he fed the multitude, he looked at them, he saw they were hungry, and he was moved in his innermost part. That means just almost like it made him sick at his stomach to to see their need. And he wanted to deal with it. Folks, no matter what you've done, God says, I love you. Let me help you. Come to me. So this morning, I want you to know, if you may think you're the worst sinner in the world and God doesn't have a plan for you, I'm saying to you, if you're not saved this morning, first thing you ought to do is get up in this invitation in just a couple of minutes and, and you ought to run down this aisle and say, I want God's compassion. I want God, God, hear my cries. Because on this Thanksgiving Day, God wants you to know you, you've got a lot of opportunity to be thankful for God. No matter what's happened, God loves you. And has a wonderful plan for your life. Now at the same time, I want you to be aware of something. God's also a God that's going to come back one day as a righteous judge. I, I don't ever want to be guilty of standing up here saying, God just love, 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 love. And God don't ever care what you do because he does care what you do. But he is a God of grace. But there is a day, my friend, when he's coming back. You see, right now, he's still offering himself as the Lamb of Judah, as the, the, but, uh, the Lamb of God. But I'm going to tell you, there's a day he's coming back as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And in that day, there's not going to be any more grace. In that day, you're going to have chosen to be judged by the law. And under the law, every person is cursed. At the end of time, we're either going to be judged by grace because we made a decision to ask for God's grace here, or one day we're going to be judged by the law. And friends, by the law, nobody measures up. Nobody's going to be good enough to go to heaven. How are you going to stand before God one day, covered in God's forgiveness and grace, or covered in your own goodness? And in our own goodness, we don't make it, folks. Number four, because God has cleansed us. These guys got cleansed and they, they went away. You know, it took some faith for him to say to them, they're standing back over there. They're saying, oh God, oh God, we help us. Or we, be, be merciful to us. Oh God, give us mercy. And when you come this morning recognizing your condition, and if you come to God this morning and say, oh God, give us mercy, I want you to know this morning God's going to give you mercy. But you've got to ask for it. You've got to say, oh God. God, I've messed up, and on my own goodness, I'm not going to make it. God, give me mercy. What is mercy? Can anybody here defend, define mercy for me? I like to compare grace and mercy this way. Mercy, or grace, is getting, I always get them confused, getting what you don't deserve, and mercy is not getting what you do deserve. Mercy is just God saying, you deserve hell you deserve judgment but i'm gonna give you heaven i'm gonna forgive your sins and when we think about that and we think about what god is saying he has he has cleansed us and we ought to be so we ought to be so grateful for what god has done vernon butler is a is an evangelist and vernon butler i've got a series of sermons of his and, and in one of those sermons here's what he said he said every christian ought to spend 10 minutes in hell He said, if you'd spend 10 minutes in hell, you'd be a better soul winner. If you'd spend 10 minutes in hell, you'd be a better Sunday school teacher, brother man. If you'd spend 10 minutes in hell, you'd look for opportunities to get with the people of God. You wouldn't look for opportunities to stay home. If you spent 10 minutes in hell, you'd care about other people that are lost more than you do. And I believe with all of my heart, if we spent 10 minutes in hell, we'd be more thankful than we are. We'd be more thankful than we are. Oh, my friend, don't die and go to hell when God is doing everything He can to draw you to Him, to give you another chance, 
to say to you, Come unto me, all of you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Not because you deserve it, but because I want you to have it. And these, these guys, it's amazing to me that nine of them didn't stop when they saw that one go back. And that one who came back was so grateful, wasn't he? He fell on his knees. He just praised God for healing him. Maybe the other nine just took God for granted. They just thought that's what God's supposed to do. You know, sometimes people come to the church and they're always saying, can you, can you give me this and can you give me that? And I, my first question is always, I, I'm always puzzled when people come from the east side of Monroe and drive all the way over here and say, can you give me money to do this or that, pay my bill? I'm like, now how'd you find me way over here, <laughs> you know? And my response is, all, response is always, well, what is your church doing for you? Because I always like to know that. And nine times out of ten, the re- response is what? I don't have a church. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but typically the world thinks that the church's responsibility is just to give out money. For no reason, no accountability. That's our job. Just take care of every problem in the world. They never put anything in, but they just always want stuff to come out. And, and, that, and that just, to, just to be honest, that we can have compassion, but we have to be wise also. We always have to be wise because there's a lot of scammers out there. How many of you saw a deal on the other day? Of scam, some group scammed for some sick guy or some homeless guy, $400,000 on GoFundMe. And, and then recently there was a church scam where a guy went around to several churches, told him he had cancer and needed help, and collected thou- tens of thousands of dollars from several different churches to find out he had no cancer. Never did. So we have to be wise. But when I think about this, and I, I think about what Vernon Butler said there, about we have so much to be thankful for. And boy, we need to show it every way we possibly can, don't we? We need to show that thankfulness. And last of all, as I conclude, we need to be thankful because we've been made by God more than conquerors. I, I think about these guys. Man, I think about their, they cried out for mercy. And you know, the Bible says in Romans that we ought to be more than conquerors. God has made us more than conquerors. What does that mean? That means that the, the grave cannot hold us. Amen? Did you know that? It wasn't just that the grave couldn't hold Jesus. The grave can't hold us. I'm going to come out of that thing one day in a glorified body. Amen? Some of you folks are going to be surprised. Y'all think it's somebody skinny, some little old body skinny as a rail. Look like if he had a candy bar, he'd have something. No, no. They're going to be healthy folks come out of that grave. Healthy folks like me and me and old Eddie and Brother Whalen over here, man. The Bible says the righteous eat of the fat of the land. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's some good theology right there, Brother Chuck, ain't it? Amen. That's some man made theology right there, boy. You can make the Bible say anything, can't you, Brother Chuck? Just about. <laughs> you know, but I think about that. I think about that day that, that I don't have to be afraid of dying. These guys now, they didn't have to be afraid of living. They didn't have to fear that every day they were going to contaminate somebody or that a family member was going to come down with this. But now they could go and have a testimony about the power of God's touch. And as they went, you notice Jesus didn't say to them, be healed. He didn't just speak a word to them and say, leprosy be gone. He said to them, go show yourself to the priest, which was the custom of their day. And they had to go to be made whole. Just like this morning. You know, if you're going to be saved, God is offering you salvation, forgiveness, love, grace. He's offering you eternal life, a home in heaven, victory over the grave. He's offering you to join the conquerors. But you've got to take a step of faith. You, somewhere along the way, God will offer it, but you're going to have to take it. You're going to have to step up and take it, folks. You say, well, I just want God to bring it to me on a silver platter. No? There's a lot of ways you can do that. You can kneel by your bed and reach out and take God by the hand and receive His forgiveness. 
But you know, the Bible's real clear about not keeping your faith decision quiet. In fact, it says, if you'll, if you'll profess me before men, I'll profess you before the Father in heaven. But if you deny me before men, if you're ashamed of me, then I'll be ashamed of you in heaven. So you might get saved by your bedside, but I'm going to tell you, some way or another, you need to make your decision public that you've accepted Jesus Christ. That's why we still give an invitation. That's why we still say, hey, come to Jesus. Don't be ashamed of Jesus. We give you that opportunity. A lot of churches have gotten away from that. Well, if you want to be saved, we'll sneak back here in the back room and nobody will know about it but me and you. I don't believe that's right. I think you ought not be ashamed of Jesus. This morning, I'm going to stand right here in the front and we're going to have some music. Brother Wade, and y'all come. Get ready for the music. And if you want to be a conqueror, if you want to receive the grace of God, if you want to have the compassion of God, the love of God, if you want to know what it's like to not be afraid of death and the grave, I want to ask you to get out of your pew this morning with a thankful heart and walk down here and take Jesus by the hand. Take him, take him and say, Oh God, I want what you have for me. Now, I'm not him, but I can introduce you to him. I can take your hand and his hand and put them together. And you know that's what we do as soul winners. We take God's hand and lost people's hand. And we help them find each other. That's all a soul winner is. Somebody that just puts hands together. But you've got to reach out. If you're going to be saved. You're in some way or another. You're going to have to reach out to God. This is not the only way you can do it. But it's one way you can do it. You can come and say I'm not ashamed of Jesus. Let's practice that this morning. Maybe you're even a thankful person and you're already saved and you hadn't been thankful lately, but you've forgotten what it's like. You, forget, you say, well, I've been sick and I ain't got enough money and I got an old vehicle and my roof leaks on my house. Preacher, I just ain't got, I've just got a bad attitude. Are you saved? Did you have to walk to church this morning? Have you had anything to eat this week? Have you got some clothes to wear? <laughs> you ought to be thankful. You ought to be thankful. Because I promise you, if you're a whiner, if you're complaining about not what you don't have this morning, if you will come see me when the service is over, in one hour, I will have three people to swap places with you in life. Just come on up here whining. I know lots of folks who'd swap places with you. They living under a bridge, living in a cardboard box. They got problems like you never thought anybody could have. They may be in a wheelchair. They may be dying of cancer. But they'll swap with you if you'd like to swap. Folks, we got so much to be thankful for. And thankfulness is contagious. People around you will catch it. Be thankful. That's one of the greatest ways we can witness is by having a thankful heart. People say, what are you so thankful for? Man, I'm thankful for my God. He's been so good to me. Let's stand together. God, we commit this invitation into your hands. Help us, O oh Lord, to be a thankful people. Father, if there's anybody here today that's not saved, I pray that they'd walk out that aisle and they'd walk down here and take me by the hand and say, I want Jesus. I want Jesus. God, help us have, our, have your way today in this service. God, you speak to hearts as only you can. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Am thine own way, Lord, am thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will while I am waiting yielded and still 
have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Wash me just now, as in thy presence, humbly I bow, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. and weary help me I pray power all power surely is thine touch me and heal me say Be back tonight. Be back tonight at 5.30 for our devotional time in here. And then we'll eat about 6 o'clock over in the fellowship hall. Um, are y'all doing choir tonight? No choir. Uh, and I don't think we're going to have the class. We're not going to have our regular class. Did y'all finish last week, Matt? Or is that still going on? One more to go. No classes tonight. So we'll just meet in here at 5.30 and then go over there. Great time of fellowship. Don't miss it tonight. And uh, I think you'll like pretty much everything I prepared. Huh? No. Well, then you need to go on pray so you can get in town in time to bring it back. <laughs> I fixed them little chocolate cookies on that plate, and they just, you arrange them just right, they're good. They're good. <laughs> take them out of that package and put them in there, they're good. <coughs> Yeah, they good. Air pudding. All right. Anything else need to be announced before we go? Thank y'all for being here. Have a great week this week, Thanksgiving with your family, and uh, remember the real meaning of Thanksgiving. They thank the Lord. They didn't thank each other. They thank the Lord for making it through that first year, and uh, we thank Him today. Brother Larry Martin, would you dismiss us, please, sir? Father, we're just so thankful that we can come and feel the praise